And the Echo Park Automotive Grand Prix is underway. Boy, three wide, and Ty Gibbs sort of missed that corner. He's back now battling for fifth instead of the lead. Third, fourth, fifth. Reddick wasting no time going after William Byron. Well, we knew Tyler Reddick would be tough here, and you heard him talk about his mistakes in qualifying and how they were able to rebound on, on hot tires, and that tells me he has a lot of confidence in how fast his car is. And William Byron's going to have something to say about it, too. He was fast last year, always has plenty of speed in that hot rod, and that will be no different today. And he here will we go. get these guys fit. There you see all the dirt in turn eight. That's going to be the corner that we talk about a lot today. You're going to keep, see, probably see some cars spin out there because of all that dirt on the racetrack. Down into turn number 11, the hairpin that leads onto the longest straightaway. Somewhat of a passing zone as you see Chastain looking to the inside, three wide to Denny. He's going to pass two of them. Yes, LaJoy, Corey LaJoy's having trouble. I want to give him a shout out before it's too late. Fifth, fifth place oh. for it. Look at this. Bubba Wallace got into the side of Corey LaJoy really hard, so not sure what happened there, but we'll figure it out. Martin Truex to pit road along with Bubba Wallace. That's damage, damage on that first lap. Let's listen along what Bubba says. I'm going to come to you. The body on the right front doesn't look terrible. I don't know what you feel. My steering mark is at 1 o'clock. Jamie. Just listening to the radio right now, Booty Barker, his crew chief, said, let's just make sure the right front is clear. Make sure everything is clear. Take your time here. Let's get it right so we can continue contending. They really feel like they have a good piece here, guys. They qualified 10th. Get some new tires on it, top it off a little, and down he goes. Yeah, no problem pitting here and staying on the lead lap. Yeah, the big problem I heard out of that conversation, that you want the wheel at, at 12 o'clock, and he said it was at 1 o'clock, which tells me that the toe is knocked out on the front end of that car. Oh, Corey yeah. LaJoy oh, had to come back up the racetrack because he was in the dirt. Harrison Burton around at the top of the hill. There's a pass for second. I knew it was coming. Gibbs has been a little bit faster than Reddick in second. Got the pass done. Byron obviously leading this race, laying some good lap times down. But that Gibbs boy, he's coming, folks. Chevrolet leading. Toyota's 2-3-4. The first Ford is Austin Sindrick in seven. Here comes Christopher Bell. Yeah, and this through this carousel section right here, it's just manage the slide of the car. Just give it as much throttle as it'll take without chatter in the front or the back tires and get it over to turn 19. But I think Tyler Reddick is, he obviously knows that Christopher Bell and, and Ty Gibbs are better than him right now. But well, here they come, Mike. Two of the first three. Bell, Bell stayed out. He's going to go after the points. The other two are going to go after the, the winning strategy or what they think is the winning strategy to put themselves in the best position to win. Meanwhile, the 24 started on pole, led all the laps until now. No adjustments for him. Fresh tires is all. So they all pitted, coming to two laps to go. So a legal stop as uh, the pit road would close. Oh, oh man. Big lockup from Ty Gibbs out of the pits on cold tires right there. It's really rough on the inside of the racetrack right there, Clint. And I think he went in there too far, and as he came over one of those bumps, the front tires locked up. Yeah, that was massive. Green checker for Christopher Bell. Second stage win this year for Bell, and his first ever at Circuit of the Americas. Byron and Bell top the list for Xfinity fastest lap. Well, this will be, as you see, William Byron go to the inside of Christopher Bell. And I was getting ready to say this will be the toughest section for um, Christopher Bell to, to kind of manage those back tires and the wheel spin compared to those new tires of William Byron and the guys behind him. Uh oh, Bubba spun. More problems for Bubba. Man, every time we come here for Bubba, and all of his trouble happened early, too. I remember, well, we saw pass Today. it Kyle Larson yep. even last year he got underneath Kyle Larson wheel uh, you know spun underneath of him ruined his day last year same thing first lap today oh you Ooh. see Brad locking it up knew he was in trouble got in the left rear of Bubba round it went yeah and that, uh, you, you saw Bubba have to check up a little bit and in that stadium section where they were you can take a really wide arc but it opens you up to get t-boned like that from where uh, Brad's angle was coming from Kyle Larson has spun 
Well, it was off the front bumper of Chris Bell, but it looks to me like Kyle missed a little bit, slipped up, locked the brakes up, whatever, got a little bit high, tried to hold it down. Bell was there, got into the back of him, spun him out. He was definitely up out of the groove, wasn't down on the bottom. I am so impressed with William Byron laying the lap times down on this racetrack, has dominated this race so far. This boy just continues to impress in that 24. And he puts the work in. I was at the go-kart track on Wednesday, and when I got there, William Byron was just finishing up in his go-kart. Whoa! Oh. Kobayashi and Stenhouse. Well, we got quite the kerfuffle right there. Quite what? the what? What'd you say? Kerfuffle. That's a Ken Squire term. That must go back, I don't know, 30, 40 years. Well, that's my word of the week, so. Well, all right. There you go. Well, here's another one. Oh, got some, got a tap. Well, oh. he's not done with him yet. Well, I've heard of the three tap rule, but that was got him the, back. That was kind of the bump and dump right there. See all the front ends just jump up in the air. Chase Elliott decided he was going to need to go underneath Carson Hosevar as quick as he could to, to get the track position and lose as little time forces him wide. Well, that was experience on Chase Elliott's behalf. Hosevar was wasn't really paying attention. How about Bell? I'll get you both right here. Thank you very much. Good move. Look at him. I mean, he, he's got he's a out of power grip. steering. I'd yep. say lost fluid or something. No, no power steering at all. You see the hitch there. It's like the steering is in and out like the power steering is coming in and out on him. Look uh, at he, the difference that it makes. He can barely steer. barely turn the wheel. Around turn 20 back to the start finish line. Denny Hamlin. Your stage two winner, William Byron shows the inside, so did Ty Gibbs. That puts Ross Chastain outside for the restart as they fan out and climb the hill. 134 feet vertical rise to turn one. See the 24 he got in locked too hard. up. Yes. Haley way to the inside made it four wide. And Chastain with the lead. Ty Gibbs pushed Byron, got by, made uh, Push him into a mistake is what I'm trying to say. Got into the corner too deep, shot up the racetrack with a wheel lock up. Rest is history, Chastain to the point. Well, now we're gonna see what William Byron's cars has. William Byron's car has because he has not been in traffic all day. So now he's gonna have to figure out how to get back by these two guys or is it gonna slow him down as much as it has everybody else as Tyler Reddick tries to go on the inside of William Byron and turn, turn 10. Here it comes, dive bomb to the inside, Ty Gibbs on Ross Chastain. He's gonna make this pass. Not so much, not so fast. Well, here's where it gets tricky as yes. you go down through turn two. See Ross. Pushed him back out. Yeah. And it would have got even harder if they'd have been side by side headed into three with the angles that, see William Byron really close to cutting the limits right there. You wanna be in oh. turn one where Byron is right now doing the dive bomb on Chastain, who gave him just enough room, but no chance to get alongside. Well, he tried to surprise him right there with a, with a late pass, and, and sometimes you do that just to show him the nose. William Byron knows it, too. You can tell that he's he's antsy to get by, and Ross there misses it is, again another right wheel there. Lock up. Yeah, that tire rolls around there and finds that flat spot, and it just keeps getting worse and worse. But this Chastain is not going to let around him, let him around him very easy. He's going to keep pushing him out, makes his car wide. That's why they all struggle to get around him. You see William Byron really wide, trying to get a good run off of turn 15. Probably wish he would have moved him and got go. more aggressive. Now. I think he's going to get the job done. Move him out a little bit. Know. Take this line. Take the real estate away from him. Or you're going to have to do it all over again at the top of the hill, which is exactly the case. Well, you said this earlier, Clint. When Ty Gibbs had the opportunity to, to clear uh, Ross Chastain, you need to make it happen when you're when you think you can. Crossover, Chastain. Bottom to top. Oh, Byron with the lead. Yeah, and Ross learned that yesterday when SVG did that to to the car right behind these two. Ty Gibbs going into turn one. We see Tyler Reddick on the inside of Ross Chastain gave him a little bit of a little bit of bumper right there and got him up out of the groove. Man, Chastain trying to take his groove away entering the next corner. He is hard to pass. <laughs> no doubt. Does not give up on him. 
You better get aggressive if you're going to pass him. All right, the leader is in. Martin Truex will make uh, his final stop of the day. But uh oh, got another kerfuffle. Kobayashi around again. That's the second time he's been around. I think the same corner, too. Well, oh man. I think uh, I think Josh Berry was was done with uh, whatever whatever is happening before this moment. I think he felt like he dive bombed it in there. Josh said, "No, that's not how we do it here, guys." Yeah, All right, had a chance at it. Here we go. He's got to get up off this corner. He's going to go for it. I this think time. so. I think you're right, Clint. He knows he's way better, and he's got to go now. There it is. Full quarter. Going to have to use still him up there. a little bit here. He was still pretty nice to him, just like he was with Chastain. Now he lost the position into this next corner. Well, that turn one was a good corner for Gibbs. And he moves through to take second place. Well, it was a little nicer to him than Chastain was. He's still going to dive to the inside. And he's got a pretty distinct tire advantage on, on Alex Bowman of five laps, which is, when you think about it, it's Almost, Long ways here, yeah, right? Over 15 miles <laughs> yeah. for sure. And that makes that race for second place really important because we don't know all the information. Maybe they are short. We don't we don't think that, that William Byron is short, but there he got him. Second you never, place. You never know that Bell. Could pass for the win. With three to go. Christopher Bell got to within six tenths of a second of Byron under breaking for turn 12. So close he can almost reach out and touch the 24 but William Byron from the pole and after a fantastic pit stop that was the class of the field has a couple of corners to go. It's pretty much been a Hendrick Motorsports and Gibbs competition so far in 2024. Hendrick was so solid the first two Gibbs showed up the last two Hendrick back on top today. William Byron down the front straightaway to the checkered flag gets his 12th career win in the NASCAR Cup Series. Yes, sir. Great day by those guys. Good job, everybody. Thanks, Spawner. Good job, William. Amazing. Hi, I'm Parker Kligerman. For more access like this from Pit Road, be sure to click and subscribe to the Motorsports and NBC YouTube channel.